Good morning, saints of God. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a great Friday. Friday, free Friday. Here it is. And I hope uh, that you're looking forward to a wonderful weekend. And let me just remind you this on the beginning here. This weekend, a couple different things. First of all, this is the weekend you're going to lose an hour's sleep. So what I suggest is you turn your clocks back tonight and lose your hour of sleep Friday. That way, Saturday, maybe you can sleep in just a little bit later so that you're on time Sunday morning to the house of God. This is Time Change Sunday. And notoriously, historically, through the year, through, through the years of Landmark Baptist Church, our number one worst day of the year is time change in the spring. When we jump forward, we spring forward, we seem to lose a lot of people in the house of God. And this week is going to be multiplied for the fact that uh, this week is our school spring break. Uh, a lot of people have got all kinds of plans. They're already planning on leaving Friday as soon as the bells ring around here. Uh, people are going all kinds of different places. And I, I just pray that they be safe, but I pray they have a lot of fun and rest and relaxation for their souls and uh, have a good time. But I'll be here preaching this coming uh, Sunday morning at 1030. Can't wait to see you. Let's have a good day in God's house this week. This uh, last week, I was in my in my house in my backyard, and our little grandson Bo was in the backyard. He uh, he is quite the guy. He he's Mister Independent. If you know Bo, some of you know him. You've seen him in the nursery and things. Seen him around with Elena and Jason, and uh, he was uh, <clears throat> there in the backyard and. Uh, he had just ridden our roller coaster. We have a roller coaster in the backyard, and all the kids just absolutely love to ride this roller coaster. Well, he had ridden it, and uh, it's in a little blue car you sit in, and it rides down these about four different hills that it goes down, and uh, it's pretty fun. And he was attempting to push his little blue car back up to the track to get it, and he just had the weight of the world on his shoulders trying to push this little car back and it just wasn't happening and he needed Paw Paul to come help him. He just had, it was just more too much for him. And uh, so I came over and helped him and uh, we had some more fun riding the, the roller coaster. But I thought about it. You know, there are many reasons in life to be discouraged. Sometimes uh, I was reading some things this week about how they're trying to take our Bible away from us and how that, uh, you know, just different things, how politically uh, the world is so turned now against Christianity and it can be discouraging. And, and I was reading about... Uh, our, our prayer list that we have here at the church, a lot of people who are really struggling are really sick, and uh, that can be discouraging. And, and you know, uh, look at my bank, bank account sometimes, that can be discouraging, and or my scales, that can be discouraging. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of things in life that can discourage us. Uh, in fact, they tell us, if you go back, I, I read a study, uh, they, they tell us that there's kind of an epidemic of depression and discouragement that has kind of just swept around the whole world, not just the United States, but around the whole world. And and they write and they tell us that uh, nearly a quarter of all workers around the world have come to this place to where they are depressed. They, they even write on a little bit further, and, and I highlighted this note that only 12% of global workers feel optimistic about their job, about the future, and about their lives. And I have to tell you something. I'm a guy who's 99.99% optimistic and ready to go. I am one who looks at the glass as half full, and I've always had that mentality. I think if you come to church and hear me preach, you'll find that. I think anybody in the family would say that's definitely how I am. I have never really been one uh, uh, for the molly grubs and sit around and boo-hoo a lot. But I will be honest with you, there are times when it just feels like, the fog just kind of moves in on me a little bit. And I can read and talk about some of those things I was talking about earlier about, and, and it can get me to the place to where I just feel like I'm discouraged. And, uh, you know, what do we do in those times? You know, uh, how can we, how can we offset that negative mindset that sometimes can creep in to all of our lives? And we have to realize that it's, it's there and it's real and we have to do something about it. And, uh, you know, thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for the Bible. We can come back to the Word of God here and we can see a truth here. Uh, the psalmist, boy, he knew what it was to be 
discouraged. He knew what it was to get to that mindset where, man, it looks bleak right now. Or, or you know, he knew what it was to be dis- be in despair, be dis- uh, disturbed. You know that? Uh, he uses a word here in Psalms 42, disquieted. And you go back and you look at it and you study it all up. It, it kind of suggests the idea of having the weight of of the world on somebody's shoulders. Now that's that's a lot when you think about it, the weight of the whole world on somebody's shoulders. But there are times and there are situations and things happen where all of us go through that little time of feeling that way and we've got to be careful. Uh, but here's what the psalmist did in the face of all that stuff. He realized that God could give him victory in any situation and he could hope completely in God. And and that's where we need to be. You know, we need to allow this fog that kind of creeps into our life sometimes to turn us back to the Lord, to see him. Uh, Though everything around us, now listen, might be shaken. Though everything around us may look negative, God can be our rock. And he can bring joy into our lives and hearts. Even as if the psalmist, he talks about this in Psalms 42, Uh, Even though all we have is tears night and day and they become our food, that's all we've got is tears. He said, in the midst of all that, I can trust in the Lord. He he faced ridicule. He faced opposition. Uh, The psalmist knew that there were times that were just so bad that he said that I just thirst for God. Matter of fact, if you go look at Psalms 42 verse 1, you see he says, as the heart panteth after the water brooks. He says, that's how my heart is. Lord, that's how I'm panting after you. I'm thirsting. I need you. But the verse I really want you to look at here uh, in verse number 5, and let Heather put it on the screens from here. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. You know, uh, in our lives, we will discover the limits of the world's answers. They just have, they're limited. But I want you to know something. The Lord Jesus Christ, hey, I'm going to tell you something. He has all the answers. Uh, you know, all the things of this world fade away, but Jesus Christ is always there and he will be faithful. He is faithful. So listen, I want to come along today and I want to encourage you. Don't let this world get you down. Remember, we're just passing through and let's do this. Let's get our eyes set on the Lord, who he is, what he's done for us. Let's seek him. Let's focus on the Lord. Let's read his word. Let's see his promises that he has for us. Let's today start praising him. And uh, remember, you can hope in him. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for your mercy and grace. Lord, we know the devil wants us discouraged. Lord, the devil wants us to to think that you can't take care of us, supply our needs, be with us. But Lord, help us to realize the great truth that you're the rock. You're the one that we can come to, the unmovable rock, Father, that we can stand on and trust. Father, I pray for my dear friends today. I pray, Lord, that you bless them and help them to come to that place, Lord, where they focus on you for all that you've done and what you're going to do for us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go serve your king. God bless you. Bye-bye.